So one of our most frequently asked questions is handle wraps, epoxy wraps. How do you treat your wraps with epoxy? How do you make them permanent? How do you make them look like there's no epoxy smeared in them? And we're gonna cover that today. So this is a very messy process, so I'm not gonna be touching the camera while I'm filming this. It's all gonna be one take. And hopefully I don't f anything up. So, so you're gonna want some gloves, you're gonna want an apron, and you're gonna want some uh, baking paper. Now this is not sponsored by Glad, but if those guys wanna sponsor me, I am 110% done. And the reason we've got the baking paper is to protect our bench. This is a very, very messy process. So definitely gloves, baking paper, the whole shebang. You're gonna want a phone book to kind of keep your knife suspended and some epoxy. I like G-Flex. Personally, it works really well with the sticking stuff together and a bit of alcohol to sort of battle it and thin it out. So, where's my mixing rod? I like to mix stuff with Kydex, just my own personal preference. So I've got these little Kydex mixers. These are just offcuts. And uh, you can usually get one or two goes out of them because, fun fact, epoxy doesn't usually stick to Kydex. Perfect, I'm gonna start mixing this stuff up. So the trick with epoxy is you wanna mix it for about two minutes until you're 100% sure it's mixed and then you wanna mix it for another two minutes so you're 110% sure it's all done properly and you don't have any, have any weird spots, especially for a handle like this. When you're doing this, there is no going back. So if you're wondering, I've coated my blades with a little bit of Renaissance wax. This stuff is magic. It's expensive, but it's really, really handy to have. Uh, it protects your blades from rust. It also protects your blades from stuff sticking to them. So very, very uh, important little tip there, especially for this. It kind of gives a sort of an insurance policy that if we do get some epoxy in the blade, we can just sort of chip it off instead of basically having to refinish our blade and start over. So we're just gonna mix this for a bit and then I'm gonna cut until uh, it's all mixed. There we go, and we're just mixing into this little, basically chopped up acetone container, just so we can kind of keep the mess down. And then I'm gonna dilute it. A little bit of metho, and that just sort of helps thin things out. You just want it to be a little bit thinner than it is now, you don't want it to be super thick. And that right there should be good. You want to keep a lot of this stuff handy, a lot of paper towels handy, because this is very, very messy. So I'm just going to hang onto my blade here and just try not to get any epoxy in the blade. I absolutely will, but you know, the more effort I put into not making a mess, the better. So then you want a paintbrush. So these are the cheapest paintbrushes I can find. These are actually kids' paintbrushes from Kmart. And the whole reason is you want them to be disposable. You just want to start painting it on. This stuff goes a lot further than you may think, so you just really just want to start painting it on. You don't want to put too much on there, so I'm just trying to get a coating on there right now. And then when, once it's all on there, I'll start moving it around a bit, and thinning it out, and making sure it's all on there well. You know, the first few you're gonna do, they're gonna be just get straight up. Um, you're gonna put too much epoxy, and you're gonna find that nice balance where the knife is properly treated, but that it also doesn't look like someone smeared epoxy in it. Now at this point, I'm gonna say we're mostly done. Now we wanna hit it with a heat gun. What the heat gun's gonna do at a very low setting, it'll make the epoxy very viscous. It'll help move the epoxy around. You can see, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but you can see the epoxy sort of flowing a lot more. And this is a really low setting. You don't want to burn your paris I've done that before. Too much heat and the paris will start to melt. You definitely don't want that. We just want to start moving it away and making sure it gets to that bottom wrap. What you want to see is you want to start seeing it dripping. There, yeah, that means that we're actually getting that wrap, getting the epoxy to soak in and penetrate nice and deep. All right, now we're going to grab some more baking paper and start wiping up the excess. top layer, you want to thin this out as much as possible. So, especially all these nooks and crannies, you'll kind of see, if I had the camera in my hand, I'd be able to zoom in real close, but you can see there's like little puddles of epoxy. You want to spread those out and kind of move quickly because now that we've hit it with heat, it's going to want to set a lot quicker. At least the outside layer will. So you just don't want to 
Right, and that, at that point, we've got a nice coating. I just want to get my Q-tips over here. And you just want to grab a Q-tip from over here. And just start cleaning up the excess that's slid onto the front there. Just kind of, you know. Yeah. And that's just enough for now. We will be coming back. And then we'll be rotating this every now and then because it is going to sort of want to pull. So every five minutes, when I, when I first apply it, every five or so minutes, I want to be flipping this over, you know, checking it, flipping it over, checking it, rotating this, because what you don't want is all the epoxy to settle down due to gravity and then pull at the bottom, because then you have one side that's going to look great and the other side's going to look <laughs> So you want to constantly flipping it, constantly be checking it to make sure you get a really nice, uh, a nice look on your paracord. Then after about the first few or four times, you want to maybe check it every half hour to an hour as it sort of hardens up. It's all very much a feel thing. I've done a few of these and I've messed up a few of these to get to the point where I'm comfortable doing them. But what this is going to do, it's going to give you a handle that is solid, that's permanent. You can do a sheath for it. It's not going to come apart. You can do kydex over it. It's a much more durable option. You can still take it off. Um, you're going to need a chisel to take it off, but it can still come off. But it's just sort of an option um, to solidify a paracord wrap. Still got the look of that sort of a Japanese style handle wrap, but it's solid, it's durable, it's good to go. And there we go. So it's been about 24 hours right now and the handle is still a tiny, tiny bit tacky. If I was to do a Kydex sheath for this, I'd probably leave it for about 48, just to be 110% sure it's cured. But right now it's good to hold and it's, you know, it's good to go. Now this is not a replacement for a solid handle, you know, your G10 handles and all that sort of stuff. This is not gonna replace them. What this is is an option to add some more durability to your paracord handles. So if you like paracord handles and you wanna make them just a little bit more durable, a little bit more permanent, this is a great option. You're gonna to have to take this off with a chisel. It's not gonna unravel on you. It's not gonna come apart very easy on you like a traditional, you know, paracord handle. So I just thought I'd share. I had a lot of guys asking about this. If you guys got any questions, drop them in the comments. And if you guys wanna see more tutorials like this, you know, let me know. I'm happy to do them. I just gotta kinda of know what information you guys wanna see. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.